Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. We've got a great program, so why don't you hit that share button and we can share it with others as well. Before we get started, parents, are you worried about the indoctrination happening in the public schools? I have great news. There's a revolution transforming education in this country and it's not happening inside the classroom. I'm talking about Schoolhouse Rocked. The homeschool revolution follows one family on their journey to dispel all the myths and misconceptions and uncover the truth about your kid's education. This is a wonderful video. You need to get a copy of Schoolhouse Rock today on DVD or HD streaming by visiting schoolhouserocked.com forward slash FP. Again, that's schoolhouserocked.com forward slash FP. This is a fantastic movie. It will really change your life when it comes to how you perceive homeschooling. Today we kick things off with our international correspondent, the one, the only Alex Newman. Alex, thanks for your time today. Great to be with you. Thank you so much, dude. I imagine your house, there's this only one big closet, Alex, and in that closet is nothing but hats. And you've added a new hat to your closet. You're running for public office. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Duke. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's not that I have a lot of time to do it, but uh, I did decide to throw my hat in the ring for this race at the urging of a lot of the grassroots Republican leaders. So we'll see. I, I think we need a you know powerful voice for freedom in the Florida legislature. Unfortunately, the, the legislature's got a lot of uh, Jeb Bush style Republicans, and they've been fighting our governor on uh, really critical issues. They, they haven't sent them a constitutional carry bill. They've, uh, they've passed these horrible laws that uh, giving hospitals immunity for whatever they do if they follow CDC guidelines. Uh, you know, they, they act like they're some kind of superheroes because they passed a law protecting children ages nine and under from transgender indoctrination and LGBT indoctrination. Uh, excuse me, but what about 10 year olds? What about 11 year olds? What about 12 year olds? Right. Uh, we, we have some serious crises going on. And also, unfortunately, the Florida legislature has really not done much to, to resist what's coming down from Washington, D.C., so uh, I've given up hope on Washington, D.C. as a source for solutions. That really is the source of our problems. And I'm hoping that at the state level, we can really turn this around. So that's why I threw my hat in the ring. We'll see what happens. But uh, it's been exciting and a lot of fun so far. Well, we certainly support you. And we have some more information today about why people like you are deciding to run. Public schools, to the surprise of nobody, are bleeding students. And so the response to that is to try to bully and intimidate parents to keep your, in- kids, your kids into the public school. Explain this story. Uh, It it really is amazing, but it's not uh, surprising. So you've got uh, a a school district, a county in Kentucky that has been deploying government agents to go harangue and pester and and even threaten implicitly parents who are not sending their kids to school anymore and who've decided to homeschool. And so uh, the HSLDA first broke this story. Uh, One of their attorneys talked about multiple parents from this area reporting that uh, government agents were calling them and trying to encourage them to send their kids back to school, threatening that they were going to do follow up home visits if the kids didn't show up at school. Uh, In one case, Duke, they even sent uh, what was described as an unmarked white police car filled with government agents to go knock on a family's door and ask them why they weren't sending their kids back and tell them that they're missing all kinds of fun field trips and uh, they promised to follow up if the kids didn't end up uh, back at school by uh, sometime during the summer. So uh, this is is really outrageous. In fact, where I stay uh, here on the coast of Florida, the government schools were sending out uh, little postcards telling parents, hey, if you send your kids back to school, you'll get uh, free laptops from the government, right? So uh, all these crazy gimmicks and and implicit threats, uh, it's out of control, Duke, but they are terrified that with this exodus of students out of the schools, their budgets are going to be slashed. Uh, and I think they're right to be terrified. I gave a anti-critical race theory talk down in uh, East Troy, Wisconsin, small place uh, yesterday night. And we had a, bu- a battery of seven or eight teachers sitting in the back. This, they usually never come. They sat there for three hours pouting. One of them even yelled at me, when are you gonna let us talk? I had to tell her, somebody wants to hire you for a talk? 
you can have as much time as you want. And if, if, until then, sit down and shut up. And it was the, when they started to talk, it was exactly what you said, whining about how we were losing our students. We're losing money. We need kids in the public schools. To not let had kids be in the public schools is to hurt them. We can't, it was, it was a stunning display of selfish, narcissistic venality. Duke, it's so funny that you mentioned that. I was actually in Indiana a few months ago, and I gave a talk there for an education organization. I think it was in Jennings County. And uh, this huge, big block of teachers, all of them wearing their Red for Ed shirts, showed up. And uh, it was very obvious that they were hostile. But they sat there uh, patiently, I'd say, for about 30, maybe 40 minutes into my talk. Uh, and then they all stood up and started marching out. And one lady comes up and starts screaming at me about how uh, she has a, a homosexual son. And I still insulted him. And, of course, I did no such thing. I just showed what they were teaching in the schools. Um, and so it looks like the, the unions and the government bureaucrats are starting to get very nervous um, and they should be I mean after all of this abuse of children all of this abuse of families all of this uh, threatening and, and indoctrination and dumbing down uh, they expect parents to just continue handing over their children and handing over the money well frankly it's not going to happen I think you've pushed a lot of people too far and showing up at speeches and and uh, basically threatening and intimidating and screaming at uh, the people who are just pointing out what you're doing uh, is not going to be an effective strategy for getting more children in these brainwash camps yeah and my I, I agree 100%. And my perception is, and from all the travel that I've been doing, that this isn't going to work. That you're, the more you try to intimidate the parents, the more they're going to leave. The, that what all you're doing is reinforcing a mother and father's decision to remove kids when you start begging them or trying to bribe them, bribing them, or heaven forbid, sending police cars full of government agents to try to harass them. I don't think you're going to convince anybody to bring their kids back. I don't think so either. And so I think the next step, and you know, we've talked about this for years now, Duke, their next step is going to be to really try to come after homeschoolers in a major way. Uh, they've already got their two chief ideologists, uh, James Dwyer at William and Mary Law School, and then Elizabeth Bartholet at Harvard Law School, the head of the uh, Child Advocacy Project, I think. Uh, and they're just coming out of the closet now. You know, you've, you've literally got the president of the United States, this was our story for Freedom Project last week, uh, saying that they're all our children. And when the kids are in the classroom, they belong to you. Uh, sorry, but no, 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 that's not how this is going to work. Parents uh, ultimately are in charge and responsible for their children. All the bullying and intimidation is not going to change that. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. Everything is just so funny right now. It's all one big joke, but it's not funny. I mean, sure, it's funny to those in the penguin suits. I like to call them the ruling class. Joe Biden just calls them his friends. These people have been so hard on you, which I don't get. I really don't. You know, I think ever since you've come into office, things are really looking up. You know, gas is up, rent is up, food is up. <laughs> Everything. Everything. It's just so funny. Let me laugh at the plebs. Which brings us to today's question. You, fellow plebe, if you were hosting the White House Correspondents' Dinner, what's the main joke you would tell? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and please share the video with your fellow plebes, those who are allowed to live, contrary to what Elizabeth Warren wants, but we'll get to that later. Now back to the hosting of the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I'll give Trevor Noah some credit, a little bit of credit, just because he at least made one joke that the rest of us all call truth. It is my great honor to be speaking tonight at the nation's most distinguished super spreader event. <laughs> No, for real, people, what are we doing here? Let's be honest, what are we doing? Like, did none of you learn anything from the gridiron dinner? Nothing, huh? Like, do you read any of your own newspapers? I mean, I expect this from Sean Hannity, but the rest of you, what are you doing here? You guys spent the last two years telling everyone the importance of wearing masks and avoiding large indoor gatherings. Then the second someone offers you a free dinner, you all turn into Joe Rogan, huh? I mean, Dr. Fauci dropped out. That should have been a pretty big sign. <laughs> Silly Trevor. 
Also, I did not realize that Jeff Dunham's puppet Walter was in attendance. At the head table, no less. And Trevor's absolutely right. It could have been a super spreader event. That's why the greatest of all lying doctors, Tony the Fouch, said he was not going to attend. Instead, he went to the pre-party with CNN's Don Lemon, where I guess the COVID doesn't hang out because it must have only been inside the correspondence dinner, not the pre-party to the correspondence dinner. Being the omniscient, almighty Dr. Savior, the Fauci did an individual assessment of personal risk and found that to be the truth. The flip-flopper Fauci earlier in the week was doing his usual TV cajoling and told PBS that we are getting out of the pandemic. We are certainly right now in this country out of the pandemic phase. Namely, we don't have 900,000 new infections a day and tens and tens and tens of thousands of hospitalizations and thousands of deaths. We are at a low level right now. So if you're saying, are we out of the pandemic phase in this country? We are. What we hope to do, I don't believe, and I've, and I've spoken about this widely, we're not going to eradicate this virus. So the pandemic is over. Certainly, according to Fauci, cool beans. But of course, he had to walk that one back real quick once because that may mean people can live their lives. And, you know, we simply cannot have that. Tony can, but you can't. And that's why it's OK that Tony went to the brunch and not the dinner of the Correspondence Gala. He was there in spirit because he was still massaging at least one member of the media like they all were doing to each other that night. What a room this is, huh? <laughs> Look at this room. Everyone is here tonight. We've got politicians, huh? we've got the media, we've got celebrities, basically anyone who's been to Jeffrey Epstein's island. This is an exclusive event. Notice how offended they all were. It's because he just spoke the truth. And that truth was not found in pretty much any of Biden's attempt at speech and the funny ha-has. Tonight, we come here and answer a very important question in everybody's mind. Why in hell are we still doing this? <laughs> This is the first time the president attended this dinner in six years. It's understandable. We had a horrible plague, followed by two years of COVID. Just imagine if my predecessor came to this dinner this year. Now that would really have been a real coup if that occurred. No, just wholly awkward and unfunny. Ronald Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear this wall down. Today's Republicans say, tear down Mickey Mouse's house. And pretty soon they'll be storming Cinderella's castle, you can be sure of it. But Republicans <laughs> seem to support one fella, some guy named Brandon. He's having a really good year, and I'm kind of happy for him. I just broke out in hives. How about you? Okay, maybe I didn't, but who's gonna call me on it? Oh yes, the federal government to the rescue. That's right, the Department of Homeland Security will unleash upon me the newly created Disinformation Governance Board. Will American citizens be monitored? No. Guarantee what, that. Well, so what we do, we, we in the Department of Homeland Security don't monitor uh, American citizens. You don't, but will we, this board change that? No, no, no. The board does not have any operational authority or capability. What it will do is gather together best practices in addressing the threat of disinformation from foreign state adversaries, from the cartels, and disseminate those best practices to the operators that have been executing in addressing this threat for years. Oh, sure. PSA. For the 90th time, if you have not yet read 1984 by George Orwell, please go read it now. This is insanity. And it's insanity that will be led by Nina Jankowicz, a disinformation czar who was a disinformation fellow at the Wilson Center. She's the very same woman who said the Hunter Biden laptop should be viewed as a Trump campaign product. But let's let Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorkas try to convince us otherwise.
eminently qualified, a renowned expert in the field of disinformation. Absolutely so. Absolutely neutral. Mary Poppins says so. When Rudy Giuliani shared that intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo and we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh, information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet so disinformation's origin seems slightly less atrocious. <laughs> Nailed it! Let's recap. The federal government just created a disinformation board. The Disinformation Governance Board, or the DGB. Let me enunciate on that. The DGB. So as not to be confused with another agency from the Soviet Union days. I'm sure there's no resemblance. None. Whatsoever. I never thought I would wish to have Dolores Umbridge from the Ministry of Magic take over such a role, but I think I would rather have Umbridge than this lady. Now let me make this quite plain. You have been told that a certain dark wizard is at large once again. This is a lie. Now, I want you to write, I must not tell lies. How many times? Well, let's say for as long as it takes for the message to sink in. Because you know, deep down, you deserve to be punished. Don't you, Mr. Potter? Yes, that witchy woman is better than Jankowitz, who is now running the non-fictional Ministry of Truth. And in reality, she should start with her own president, Joey, who is making up lies about the role of the federal government involving abortion. After the leak of a draft opinion by the court on overturning Roe v. Wade, President Biden decided to urge lawmakers and voters to fight for abortion rights. Yes, Joe Biden urges the living to vote for killing. And Senator Elizabeth Warren takes it about 17 steps further. I am angry because of who will pay the price for this. It will not be wealthy women. Wealthy women can get on an airplane. They can fly to another state. They can fly to another country. They can get the protection they need. This will fall on the poorest women in our country. So the argument is that if Roe v. Wade is overturned and left to the states to decide, the rich can kill the babies in luxury and that more minority babies will live. Fine. One question. What's a woman? How are you feeling? I am angry. Angry and upset? Angry and upset and determined. The United States Congress can keep Roe v. Wade the law of the land. They just need to do it. I, I've never seen you so angry. You seem to be... This is what the Republicans have been working toward this day for decades. They have been out there plotting, carefully cultivating. Lizzie's a good Methodist, though, just as Joe's a good Catholic. You must remember this. Joe demonstrated as much on this year's Ash Wednesday. And last night you continue to support Roe v. Wade as a Catholic. Why do you support abortion as a Catholic? To find church teaching. I tell you what, I don't want to get in a debate with you on theology, but you know, well, anyway. <laughs> I'm why? Not, I'm not, I'm not why support abortion? A, I'm not going to make a judgment for other people. Yeah, he's just going to make a judgment for the babies. And that judgment is death. Side note, did you see how quickly Jill sped over to him? Maybe she wrote about that event in her newly released biography. That is so popular because she is the greatest of all doctors, though it's a battle between her and Anthony. She's so popular that the book sold 250 copies. Her husband did get 81 million votes because he's so popular, too. And according to the book's description, Dr. Jill Biden has been described as President Joe Biden's greatest political asset. So naturally, the book sold fewer copies than the number of times she has lied for her husband during his first year in office. But good Christians all around. Joe's response on abortion is kind of like the other Catholic who brags about being such a good Catholic. She's so good that she went all the way to Ukraine. There she is, being the bright, shining beacon of hope that is Nancy Pelosi. I just assume Nancy had some business dealings when she was there, too, because, you know, that ice cream doesn't buy itself. 
Am I right? We believe that we are visiting you uh, to say thank you uh, for your fight for freedom, that we are on a frontier of freedom, and that your fight is a fight for everyone. And so our commitment is to be there for you until the fight is done. She traveled all the way to Ukraine on your dollar to say that. Neat. But that's why she wasn't at the correspondence dinner. She had to be the shining star, becoming the highest ranking official to visit Ukraine since the Russian invasion. The person next in line, ahead of her, couldn't go because she got the thing. Which brings us to... Where in the world is Kamala Malama Ding Dong? <laughs> Lama has been jabbed with both doses of the vaccine for the thing. Then she got a booster for the thing, and she wears a mask everywhere to hide the menacing smile and muffle that cackle. And then she got the thing. But she added to her litany of action to protect against the thing by taking an antiviral pill. And she will mask up to protect her ego or something. Not like all those unmasked at the Met Gala, where those who wear the goofiest of outfits are protected from the thing. Like New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who tried to one-up Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in his chalkboard outfit at the Met Gala. Last year, we remember, AOC in her, you know, tax the rich dress. Well, in comes Adams this year with an end gun violence tux. These are the true heroes. What we've learned this week is that COVID won't get you if you are at an indoor event, if it's, you know, for a just reason, or if you are part of that ruling class. But it will get you if you are triple jabbed and wearing a mask. That is the truth. So I guess I can now be the head of the Ministry of Truth. The truth of the truth is that you should continue to give your Fs, faith, family, and friends. And you should share this video. Until next time, stay healthy, America. If you have a question for Dr. Duke and Katie, please send it our way by emailing askduke at fpeusa.org. Okay, before we wrap things up, I do want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. Today, we give a great big shout out to Joe from Bartlett, Illinois. Thanks for supporting us, Joe. We really appreciate that. And that's going to do it until next time. I'm Dr. Duke. Stay educated, my friends.